IVF. It's real. It works. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin M. Johnson, and I'm here once again to provide yet more insight into why small is good. I know what you're thinking. You're already convinced. Okay, but here's more. This procedure was first successfully used in humans in 1977 in England by doctors Edwards and Steptoe. The scientific importance of this discovery was recently recognized with the awarding of the Nobel Prize in Medicine to Dr. Edwards. To date, millions of babies have been delivered worldwide as a result of this treatment. The procedures to achieve IVF pregnancy have become increasingly simpler, safer, and markedly more successful. Believe it or not, nearly 100 unsuccessful attempts were made by Edwards and Steptoe prior to the famous success with the delivery of Louise Brown in 1978. The first major leaps in IVF success came in the mid-90s and have continued at breakneck speed to the present. Success rates previously obtainable in only the very best prognosis patients are now routinely realized in 41 and 42 year olds. To achieve pregnancy as a result of IVF, several steps are necessary. One, hormonal suppression with birth control pills or other drugs for a few weeks prior to the start of the cycle. Two, stimulation of the ovary with naturally occurring hormones called gonadotropins, LH and FSH, for nine to 12 days to produce approximately nine to 15 eggs. Three, Retrieval of the eggs from the ovary using ultrasound. There are no incisions. Four, fertilization of the eggs and cultivation of the embryos in the laboratory. Five, placement of the embryos into the uterus for implantation from two to six days later. Six, remaining high quality embryos are cryopreserved for later use. There are many reasons for the marked improvement in IVF success rates in the last one and a half decades. Certainly, the development of new and more purified drugs, along with innovative stimulation protocols, have played a significant role. For that matter, so has better pre-cycle evaluation, including ovarian reserve assessment, which allows for more accurate stimulation drug dosing. In the laboratory, technology has changed everything a growing recognition that eggs and embryos are extremely susceptible to volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and other contaminants led to the development of IVF clean rooms. ORH set the standard with the installation of the first certified IVF clean room in the Pacific Northwest in 2000. Studies have shown increased fertility rates and improved embryo cell stage development in a clean room environment. A realization that growing embryos have different nutritional needs day to day led to the development of different media for different stages of development. These are called sequential media and allow for routine extended culture to day five and six, the blastocyst stage in patients. We were early adopters of this technology and have been using sequential media and performing extended culture since our inception in 1997. Transfer techniques have certainly played a role as well. The use of soft, specifically engineered transfer catheters and ultrasound guidance are prime examples. Here at ORH, we have used soft transfer catheters since their introduction into the United States in the 90s and have over a decade of experience with ultrasound guided transfers. At this point, you're probably wondering what all of this means. That's easy, here's what it means. Small is good. The results are extraordinary.